I'm Daniel Brown, and today's talk is about how to tell a story through drawing. To tell a story through drawing, you should begin by carefully writing down everything you wish to say about your design. The layout of your drawings should then be composed explicitly so that the composition naturally leads the eye from the drawing that represents your first sentence sequentially to the drawing that represents your final sentence. In this way, the visual sequence of your composition becomes your guide when you have to present a design project, and it naturally reminds you about what you need to say in the order that you want to say it. But even more important, the composition will tell your story to a viewer even if you are not there in person to tell the story yourself. But if you tell your story in a way that is simply linear, your composition will be boring and static. So to hold people's attention, the composition needs to be dynamic as well as sequential. In previous lectures, you have already learned seven of the basic rules of composition. You have learned the one-third rule and the importance of having a large variety of content types in a range of proportions with plenty of space in between. You have learned that our eye will be drawn to complementary colors. Our eye will typically go first to warm colors and then to cool colors. And our eye will typically follow lines and shapes that imply direction. From experience, we also know that our eye will usually go to larger images and then move to smaller ones. And our eye will usually go to high contrast areas and then to low contrast areas. So to tell a story through drawing, these are the basic rules for how a story can be told in a dynamic way rather than a static one. But the next step is to hold the viewer's attention, actually seducing the viewer to want to see our story unfold. And to hold the viewer's attention, there are five additional guidelines that will help. Add interest. Tell your story by mixing your media so the story is told through multiple voices. Add dynamic direction. Tell your story by guiding the viewer's eye around the page rather than simply across it. Add a strong ending. Tell your story by beginning and ending with alluring images. The ending of the sequence is just as important as the start. Add the unexpected. Tell your story by inviting the viewer's eye to discover even more as they come closer to your layout. For example, an area that may appear simply black from a distance might be revealed to contain intriguing new details in the darkness as you come closer. Black should never simply be black. It can be a combination of dark colors, lines, textures, and hidden images, all of which can add meaning to the tale you wish to tell. Finally, add mystery. Tell your story by leading the eye through your image sequence and ultimately beyond the field of view, making the viewer believe that there is indeed even more to see beyond the edge of the page. When you complete individual images that you wish to compose together into a single composition, it is essential to consider if you will retain their borders to isolate them or if you will remove their borders to integrate them. This image by Kevin Schellenbach begins with four separate images. To add dynamic interest, he inverts two of the images so that they become white line drawings upon a black background. Notice how he integrates these images. The edge of the black box becomes the ground plane for one of the elevations. The black lines of the image at the top become the white lines of the image below. And the composition contains images at multiple scales, with the detail at the right being a different scale from the plan and the elevations. This image by Anthony Lau retains the borders of the separate small images at the bottom so that they appear together as a single graphic line anchoring the composition. But notice how the upper images are all integrated with one another. To add interest in a double meaning, the dark areas suggest three separate drawings while simultaneously representing one continuous site for the architectural interventions. This image by Mas Yendau retains the borders of some images while blurring the boundaries of others. 
To add interest and a double meaning, the larger image on the right appears as a two-dimensional drawing of a map, while simultaneously appearing as if someone has excavated through the map to uncover a three-dimensional intervention below. Let's look at how students from our school have integrated a large perspective with other smaller supporting images. The image by interior architecture student Chloe Walbrand places her large perspective to the right of the composition at the one-third position at an angle that leads the eye naturally to the left as well as from light to dark. She has located and shaded the plan to make it look as if it is slightly pressed down into the page. In this way, the plan reads as if it might be a footprint left behind by the building that once stood there, but that later moved to its current site. Even more interesting, the building you see is in fact just her interior design of the actual building. The actual building's exterior envelope is in the distance, watching like a sentinel. This building envelope in the distance is flanked on either side by the structure to the left and the interior design to the right. The three images below this composition lead the eye from left to right from a large scale image to a technical detail. The central image is also composed as a collection of images with a large perspective at the bottom and three elevations above, positioned as if they are the guardians of the design looking down upon it. This image by student Dan Cole places the large perspective at the bottom of the composition. The angle from which we see this perspective adds to its heroic nature, and the student overlays a wireframe onto the final render, integrating both drawing and model as mixed media. The smaller images above begin with interior components of the design, adding progressively more and more information until they lead us to the final design at the bottom. A technical detail is located at the top of the composition, integrating it with the text. This image by student Anis Lee places the large perspective at the top of the composition. It is composed at an angle that makes it look as if it is poised to move forward across the page. The plan is positioned as if the perspective might move forward and actually come to rest within the plan. The site plan on the right is at a different scale. It is oriented towards the perspective and balances the overall composition while leading our eye towards the one-third line where the collection of all three images come together. Let's look at how students from our school have taken up the challenge of composing multiple images into an integrated composition that tells the story of their design. This image by architecture student Chi Tran integrates three scales and three different points of view into a single composition. He integrates design drawing together with technical drawing. He invites the site of his plan to become an abstract background for the detail. And he uses directional lines to direct the eye through and around the composition. This image by interior architecture student Elizabeth Bullings moves our eye through three different scales from the entire design intervention into an interior space and ultimately to a furnishing detail. She uses the pivot of her design furnishing to also become the directional pivot that shifts our eye from one direction to another. This image by landscape architecture student Remy Bint also moves our eye through three different scales from the overall design to the scale of the street to the scale of the urban furniture. And like the previous student images, he uses directional lines to direct the eye through and around the composition. The main image of a drawing composition is often referred to as the hero shot. In this composition, the hero shot takes the form of a high contrast three-dimensional rendered drawing emerging from a low contrast two-dimensional line drawing. In this student composition, the hero shot takes the form of an architectural interior that is emerged from its building envelope to stand alone. Its shadow reads as a sundial while also representing the facade that is missing. The tiny plan suggests the hands of time in the face of a clock, while the tiny axonometric drawing symbolically appears as if it might be the child of the larger image that is protecting it. In this final student image, the hero shot is developed through mixed media, 
It integrates a combination of rendered model, wireframe model, hand drawing, and collage to create the composition. Its heroic nature appears not only because of the powerful angle from which we are viewing it, but also because of the elements that have been purposefully hidden to expose the inner soul of the building. The composition uses cool colors at the bottom that become warmer and warmer as the eye moves upward. The sky takes on the same palette and directional angles as the architecture, making it appear almost as if the architecture is being dynamically transformed by the wind. Each of these examples has used the guidelines for creating a composition that tells a story in powerful but very different ways. To tell a story through drawing and animation, the same guidelines will apply. Let's look at an example. Imagine you would like to present your design for a simple black shoe. Like all good drawing compositions, you need to begin and end with an image that will capture the viewer's imagination. You need to include mixed media and a variety of content. One way to include a variety of content for a simple design is to evidence the design process. We know that high contrast will establish focus, and we know that directional lines will move the viewer's eye from one chapter of the story to the next. We know that the eye will naturally move from warm to cool colors and back again. We know that adding the unexpected or a surprise will seduce the viewer to want to see even more. We know that the one-third rule is about dynamic movement, but we also know that centered images can be just as important because they can bring the tale to a point of pause. We know that high contrast will enhance the emphasis of a chapter in our story. And we know that the final image is just as important as the first. So let's see what we can do. Let's create an animated drawing composition that tells the story of our design for a simple shoe. This brings us to the end of today's seminar. To help you reflect further on what you have learned, let's look more closely at four of the compositions that were just discussed. In this composition by David Hahn, reflect upon the directional focal lines of the overall composition and how they guide the eye to tell a story. Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a second composition. In this composition by Anthony Lau, reflect upon the directional focal lines of the overall composition and how they guide the eye to tell a story. Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a third composition. In this composition by student Elizabeth Fullings, we have already discussed the upper collage image of the overall composition. Now reflect upon how this upper image guides the eye to the lower image through its own unique sequence and back again. Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a fourth and final composition. In this composition, we have already discussed how it uses diverse levels of contrast, framing, and depth to tell a story. Reflect upon the directional focal lines of the overall composition and how they guide the eye to tell a story. Pause to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to bring our talk to a conclusion.